Hi there, Steve Coffin here. Today I want to talk about how long it takes to learn a language. It's a question I get all the time. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell to get notifications, and of course, by all means, join me at Link, which is where I learn languages. So I get this question quite often. How long does it take to learn languages in general? Which is a very difficult question to answer. Or how long does it take to learn Spanish or Chinese. So my first reaction is what's the hurry and I'll explain why. Now there are some evaluations by authoritative uh, sources of information like the American Foreign Services Institute and I'll leave a link in the description box and you can look up how many instructional hours they think is necessary or based on their experience is necessary for an English speaker to learn different languages. And you will see there that obviously languages that are closer to English that share vocabulary with English uh, are easier, you know, French, Spanish and so forth, even German. Languages that are more different from English take significantly longer and there's an indication there of how many hours are required. Now I have a few problems with that and I'm going to go through those. First problem is their evaluate or their uh, you know estimate of how long it takes is based on instructional hours. All of my experience in language learning is that what you do outside the classroom is or can be more important than what you do in the classroom because as Manfred Spitzer famously said, you got his book here. Uh, language learning takes place in our brains, not in the classroom. So just looking at instructional hours to me is not a good indication of how long it takes to learn a language. So that's point number one. Point number two is, you know, to me language learning is a continuum. You know, yes you start at a certain point but you never finish. Um, there is no language that I speak other than English, let's say, where I don't worry about mistakes that I make, but there is no sort of second, third, fourth, fifth language that I speak as well as I would like to speak it. I make mistakes in all of them. So, but I enjoy them. So, you know, how long does it take to achieve what becomes the question. And if you enjoy the process of language learning as I do, does it really matter? You will learn as quickly as you learn. I think for example of my wife who enjoys playing the piano. She's been at it for years, I don't know, 20 years? She learns on her own, she enjoys it, I hear her music in the house, I'm happy, I enjoy listening to it. She's no concert pianist. She is slowly improving but the whole process to her is enjoyable otherwise she wouldn't do it. I'm much the same, even in languages, the most recent languages that I'm learning like Persian and Arabic. I've been at it now for quite a while, it's amazing, it's, it's two, three years. Um, I enjoy listening to those simple mini stories and picking up on something, picking something out, noticing something that I hadn't noticed before. I enjoy the sensation of being able to understand a podcast in Arabic or uh, a story about Iranian cuisine in Persian. But I'm a long way and I enjoy if I happen to find a checkout person at the supermarket who speaks Arabic or Persian and I can speak to them in that language, I'm very happy. But I'm enjoying the whole process and I am still a long way from being fluent. Even that term fluent is a little bit subjective because some people are motivated to want to speak and to say even simple things even if they don't understand what the other person is saying. I enjoy what I'm able to do in Arabic and Persian which is listen to things, read things. There aren't that many people that I can speak to. I'm not going to spend my evenings out you know, looking for people that I can inflict myself onto so that I can practice my Persian and Arabic. So it depends also on what our, our goals are. In some discussion and uh, people who are involved in language instruction we're talking about interlanguage, which is a concept that language teachers or ling linguists of the academic variety have come up with. And it sort of refers to the fact that as we learn a language, you know, when we begin, we're, 
we're very much dominated by our native language or a language we know well and we gradually transition into a situation where we more naturally use the target language. So while we're in that transitional period, the, the sort of academic the teachers, they talk about interlanguage where the native language is influencing the language that we're trying to learn. But that's almost always the case. There's nothing special about that because the whole process of learning a language is to gradually transition to a, a situation where you can naturally think and naturally use the new language. I mean, uh, I, I have always done business with non-native speakers of English. They have the trace of their native language. So Germans say, I have been living in uh, Canada since many years, which of course is not correct. English speakers speaking French, they have trouble, even those who speak very well, they make mistakes in gender, for example, or they'll make other mistakes that reflect their native language. It was quite amusing to me, I, again, I follow different people on Twitter and there's one Twitter account which talks, of, which has something to do with modern foreign language instruction in the UK. And apparently in the UK, for what they call the GCSE, which is a general certificate for secondary education, they have come up with a list of words that someone should know and different sort of intricacies of grammar that people should be tested on in order to get their GCSE certificate. One of which was jouer de and jouer à, or jouer, so jouer au, jouer du. In French, when you play jouer, when you play an instrument, it's jouer de, du piano. When you play a sport, jouer au football, whatever, it's a. Okay, minor point. So you're going to really mark down a student who communicates well, who understands well, because they didn't touch on these specific grammar points that some bureaucrat has decided should be the criterion for uh, either passing someone or not passing someone. It, it's ridiculous. It, it, learning a language is a continuum. Hopefully we can enjoy it. Uh, the objective is comprehension, to understand more and more, to acquire more and more words, to gradually get enough confidence in the language so that we can have meaningful conversations. So, but, but if people are looking for some kind of rule of thumb, some kind of, uh, you know, encouragement that it's worth the effort. My experience has been that for languages that are similar to ours with the same writing system, with a lot of common vocabulary, and if we're motivated, whether we're in a classroom or learning on our own, I think that in three months, you can make a breakthrough, three months. On the other hand, if we're dealing with a language where the writing system is different, in the case of say Chinese or Arabic or Hebrew or uh, you know Korean, very different. If there's essentially no common vocabulary, then to reach that sort of breakthrough point where you feel now I've really achieved something. And I'm not talking about just being able to say a few things because you can do that after a couple of days. I'm saying you have enough of a sense now. Maybe you understand some of the mini stories. You have that confidence, I'm gonna make it. That can take six to nine months in these more difficult languages. And it can seem at times as if we're not getting anywhere. And I can remember in Russian, in Czech, now in Arabic, in Persian, it seems that I'm forever, you know, treading water, spinning my wheels. And yet that's not true. If we continue with the language, we eventually improve. And so the, the key is to enjoy the process, to be satisfied with whatever level you have achieved. Now, obviously, if you have to pass the GCSE, then, you know, in addition to your reading and listening and enjoyable study of the language, you may want to get a hold of a list of the particular points of grammar that they're going to test you on, or the particular, vo particular vocabulary list, the TOEFL list. But by and large, the learning pro, and that's specific only for the exam, because when it comes to learning the language, in order to be able to use the language, to communicate with people, the key is not to worry about how long does it take, but rather to find a way to enjoy the language, to engage with enjoyable content, to give yourself credit for what you have achieved, 
and simply stay with it. And you will continue to improve as long as you continue doing those things.